And now we come to Sutta number 4.7.62 on the Book of the Force, eh? or Chapter of the Force. Eh? Now the house father, Anatta Pindika, came to visit the Exalted One. As he sat at one side, the, exalt- the Exalted One said this to the house father, Anatta Pindika. House father, there are these four kinds of bliss to be won by the householder who enjoys the pleasures of sense from time to time and when occasion offers. What for? The bliss of ownership, the bliss of wealth, the bliss of deathlessness, the bliss of blamelessness. And what, house father, is the bliss of ownership? In this case, a clansman has wealth acquired by energetic striving, amassed by strength of arm, won by sweat, lawful and lawfully gotten. At the thought, Wealth is mine, acquired by energetic striving, amassed by strength of arm, won by sweat, lawful and lawfully gotten. Bliss comes to him, satisfaction comes to him. This, house father, is called the bliss of ownership. And what is the bliss of wealth? In this case, house father, a clansman, by means of wealth acquired by energetic striving, amassed by strength of arm, won by sweat, lawful and lawfully gotten, both enjoys his wealth and does meritorious deeds therewith. At the thought, by means of wealth at quiet, I both enjoy my wealth and do meritorious deeds. Bliss comes to him, satisfaction comes to him. This house father is called the bliss of wealth. And what is the bliss of debt, debtlessness? In this case, a clansman owes no debt, great or small, to anyone. At the thought, I owe no debt, great or small, to anyone. Bliss comes to him. Satisfaction comes to him. This house father is called the bliss of debtlessness. And what is the bliss of blamelessness? In this case, house father, the Aryan disciple is blessed with blameless action of body, blameless action of speech, blameless action of mind. At the thought, I am blessed with blameless action of body, speech and mind. (coughs) Bliss comes to him. Satisfaction comes to him. This is called the bliss of blamelessness. Such, house father, are the four kinds of bliss to be won by the householder who enjoys the pleasures of sense from time to time when occasion offers. Uh, That's the end of the sutta. You see, in this sutta, the Buddha said that lay people uh, can enjoy uh, these few things. uh. The the first two is uh, uh, the bliss of ownership and the bliss of wealth. They are related. uh. Uh, Firstly, the first one, the the bliss of ownership, uh, is because a person, uh, because of energetic uh, striving uh, uh, by his own sweat, uh, he has lawfully gotten all these um, um, things that uh, that um, he owns. Like. So because of that, uh, he gets a lot of satisfaction from it. And the second one, wealth, uh, is about the same. He also sweats for it, acquires a lot of wealth. And uh, with his wealth, uh, he does meritorious deeds. Like. That's a wise man because... Uh, 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 whatever we enjoy in the world, uh, we are digging into our uh, bank, our bank account, our bank account of blessings. You know? So as we enjoy life, uh, we are using up our blessings. So it's always very important to plant back the seeds uh, of uh, meritorious deeds uh, so that another day they will sprout uh, and you will enjoy, you can enjoy the fruits of your meritorious deeds again. Uh, and that's why uh, uh, the Buddha always advises uh, that when you have wealth, uh, to do meritorious deeds so that you can get to enjoy it again and again. Uh. So from, from, from the first two items here, you can see very clearly uh, that Buddha never condemned uh, the acquiring of property and wealth. Uh. Uh, only thing that the Buddha condemned is unwholesome actions. Uh, if we uh, do unwholesome actions uh, to acquire property or wealth uh, or use the property or wealth uh, to do unwholesome actions, then the Buddha would condemn such action. Uh, 
But uh, if we know how to use our wealth wisely, uh, then it is good to have to have uh, wealth also. Uh, and then the third one is the bliss of debtlessness. You don't owe anybody anything, uh, and you get satisfaction uh, from knowing that you don't owe people anything. The last one is very important: the bliss of blamelessness. If we don't have um, blameworthy action, uh, we have not done something uh, that is blamable uh, through the three karmas of body, speech and mind, uh, then when we are about to pass away especially, uh, the mind is happy, it does not have a lot of remorse. That's why you find people who keep sila, keep their precepts, uh, when they are about to pass away, uh, the mind is not disturbed, there is no remorse in their mind. Uh, so because of that, uh, their mind is very clear very clear. Until the moment they pass away, eh, their mind is very clear. Whereas if you see some other person who doesn't keep the precepts, eh, the mind, the remorse disturbs him. Eh. Uh, and this, uh, re- because of remorse, eh, at, at the thought of having done wrong, eh, the mind becomes very restless and disturbed. And these people, they become senile. Uh, you see that some people, senile, even before they pass away, eh, they are already chattering nonsense uh, uh, words uh, and when they are about to pass away uh, they see fearful uh, sights you know because they are about to be reborn into a woeful plane and all the things that uh, consciousness conjures up in their mind uh, are all frightening things whereas another person like recently uh, I've seen an old man in in Kanga about 81 years old just about three weeks away ago he passed away I went to see him he had a lot of visions but they were good visions uh, pleasant visions, and he was very happy, and he died very peacefully. Yeah. So, coming back to this uh, wealth, uh, uh, the chances of committing unwholesome actions uh, increase uh, when we have more wealth. Uh, it's um, difficult uh, to find uh, somebody uh, with a lot of wealth and power uh, who does not misuse the wealth and power. So the only thing that can help us uh, walk the proper path uh, is the Dhamma. That's why it's very important uh, to have the Dhamma as our refuge. We always take refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. So we have the Dhamma as our guide. There's nothing more important uh, than an uh, understanding uh, of life uh, from the Dhamma. So, because the Dhamma teaches us to conduct ourselves well, even you have wealth also, you can enjoy and still you won't make a mess of life and you will have a good rebirth even if you have a lot of wealth and enjoy this life and you go to the next life and still you enjoy because of the guidance you get from the Dhamma. Now we come to another Sutta 4.7.67. On a certain occasion, the Exalted One was staying near Savati in Jeta Grove in Anatta Pindika's Park. Now at that time, at Savati, a certain monk had been bitten by a snake and had died. So a great number of monks came to visit the Exalted One, and on coming to him, saluted him and sat down at one side. So seated, those monks said this to the Exalted One, Lord, a certain monk here in Savati has been bitten by a snake and has died. Then the Buddha said, Then monks, that monk did not suffuse with the heart of goodwill, Metta, the four royal families of snakes. Had he done so, that monk would not have died of snake bite. What are the four royal families of snakes? The royal family of snakes called Virupaka, that called Erapata, that called Chabiaputta and the royal family of snakes called Kantha Gotamaka. Monks, that monk did not suffuse with the heart of goodwill these four royal families of snakes. Had he done so, he would not have died of snake bite. Monks, for self-warding, for self-guarding, for self-protection, I do enjoin that you suffuse with the heart of goodwill these four royal snakes of these four royal families of snakes thus. Meta towards Virupaka, towards Erapata, Meta. Meta towards Chabiaputta, towards Kanhagotamaka, Meta. Meta towards the footless, towards the fo- two-footed, Meta. Meta towards the four-footed, towards the many-footed, Meta. 
May the footless do me no harm. May not the two-footed do me harm. May the four-footed do me no harm. May not the many-footed do me harm. All creatures, all that breathe, all beings, may they all see what is auspicious. May no evil come to them. Measureless is the Buddha, measureless the Dhamma, measureless the Sangha. Limited are creeping things, snakes, scorpions, centipedes, spiders, lizards and rats. Made by me is this protection, made by me is this parita. May those beings go away. Homage to the Exalted One, homage to the Seven Samasam Buddhas. Uh, that's the end of the sutta. The last part that I read out to you uh, is the parita called the kanha, kanda parita. Goes so something like this: viru pake hime me tang me tang era pate hime chabya pute hime me tang me tang kanha go tama ke hi cha apada ke hime me tang me tang di pada ke hime chatu pade hime me tang me tang bahu pade hime mamang apada ko hing si mamang hing si di pada ko etc etc. So this uh, this is this uh, sutta is about this parita. Now this monk, uh, he got killed by this snake. Uh. Normally snakes uh, don't bite us. You know. Normally, unless they are cornered, unless they are threatened, their life is threatened, then only they bite us. For example, sometimes you walk in the dark, you don't have a torchlight, you don't know, you step on them, and then it's likely that they will bite you. And... Uh, now, if they bite you, uh, how hard they bite you, how much poison goes into your blood, uh, depends on conditions. It's just like imagine, for example, you step on a dog. If it's your own dog, uh, you step on the tail or you step on the foot, uh, it will naturally try to bite you because it is in pain. But if it's your own dog, even though it bites you, it doesn't bite very hard. But if it's somebody else's dog you're not familiar with, uh, you step on the tail, uh, he'll come and bite you very hard. Uh, so in the same way, how hard the snake bites you uh, depends on whether you have metta or not. So if we have metta, we have a lot of goodwill, uh, and this snake, they can sense also. Uh, so uh, when they bite us, uh, it won't be very hard. Uh, that's why the Buddha said uh, that's important to have metta there's another sutta somewhere else also where the Buddha said if we have metta loving kindness or goodwill uh, towards all living beings uh, then wherever we go we are not disturbed by these spirits uh, whether they are ghosts or devas uh, they won't disturb us uh, because they can read our minds they know what type of mind we have uh. so if we have a mind of uh, goodwill towards all beings uh, it is always um, uh, for our protection. So this, this uh, the Buddha taught his uh, disciples uh, to chant this Kanda Parita, uh, especially uh, if we go to uh, lonely, secluded places. Uh, suppose you stay in a cave where there's likely to be snakes and may, uh, possibly spirits. Uh, so we chant this. Uh, this is a very, very useful parita. Uh, it says, um, in the, uh, besides the four royal snake families, uh, you give meta towards footless beings, that means snakes, uh, ghosts, etc. And then towards two-footed beings, uh, like human beings, and towards four-footed beings, like dogs, etc. And then towards many-footed beings, like centipedes, scorpions, etc. Uh, then you say, may the footless do me no harm, may, the, may not the two-footed do me harm, etc. Uh, so, if they, are, if they are psychic, if they are spirits, uh, when they listen to this, uh, uh, they know that you uh, don't mean them any harm, and you don't want also to be harmed. So, it is very useful uh, parita for forest monks. Forest monks like to... Uh, chant this parita wherever we go somewhere where we feel a bit afraid. Then the next sutta is 4.7.70. The Buddha said, At such time, monks, as rajas are unrighteous or unjust, the ministers of rajas also are unrighteous. When ministers are unrighteous, Brahmins and householders also are unrighteous. 
Thus, townsfolk and villages are unrighteous. This being so, moon and sun go wrong in their courses. This being so, constellation and stars do likewise. Days and nights, months and fortnights, seasons and years are out of joint. The winds blow wrong, out of season. Thus the devas are annoyed. This being so, the sky deva bestows not sufficient rain. Rains not falling seasonably, the crops ripen in wrong season. Monks, when, rob, when crops ripen in wrong season, men who live on such crops are short-lived, ill-favored, weak and sickly. But monks, when rajas are righteous, the ministers of rajas also are righteous. When ministers are righteous, brahmins and householders also are righteous. Thus townsfolk and villages are righteous. This being so, moon and sun go right in their courses. This being so, constellations and stars do likewise. Days and nights, months and fortnights, seasons and years go on their courses regularly. Winds blow regularly and in due season. Thus the devas are not annoyed, and the sky deva bestows sufficient rain. Rains falling seasonably, the crops ripen in due season. Monks, when crops ripen in due season, men who live on those crops are long-lived, well-favored, strong and free from sickness. That's the end of the sutta. So this sutta is uh, saying uh, that leaders are very important. Here is rajas. Uh, rajas means kings. Uh, in those times we had kings. Uh, but nowadays uh, it would be government leaders, etc. Uh, and because the actions of leaders uh, influence those below them, uh, and in our religion, it's also the same. The leaders of our religions are our monks. So if monks set a good example, uh, then our religion will do well. Uh, but if monks set a bad example, uh, just like a leader, then uh, people um, are discouraged, people uh, are disappointed, and they don't come to the temples, etc. And then our sasana, our religion will suffer. That's why it's very important uh, for monks and uh, government leaders, etc., to set a good example. And the reason why people uh, go on the wrong course uh, is because of greed, hatred, and delusion. If we succumb to greed, hatred, and delusion, uh, then uh, we do wrong things. Uh, and because of our wrong actions, uh, um, the devas, uh, they are annoyed. When the devas are annoyed, uh, uh, they don't uh, give rain when it's supposed to rain. Uh, and we can compare this sutta with another sutta, which I had read some time ago about the population of the earth being very great a long time ago. And then the Buddha said, now it's uh, people are very much less than before because of several reasons. One is because of greed, hatred and delusion. People fight and kill each other, so the population decreases. Another one is uh, the devas are annoyed because of the greed, hatred and delusion of human beings. They don't give rain at the proper time. And because of that, there is famine, uh, there is starvation, so people... Uh, the population of people decrease. Another one that they had read earlier was sometimes the devas, they can let go, uh, very fierce yakas, very fierce demons uh, that can kill human beings. And it's only because human beings uh, are walking the good path, uh, greed, hatred and delusion is not so great that these higher devas, they protect us, they hold back these fierce demons, fierce yakas. But when we are too much, then they let them go and uh, we will have to suffer. Mm. So we come to another sutta, 4.8.73. The Buddha said, Monks, possessed of four things, a man is to be understood as being unworthy. What for? Here in monks, the unworthy man, even unasked, speaks out what is discreditable to another. What then would he say if asked? If, however, he is obliged to speak on being questioned, then without reserve or equivocation, he utters this praise of another to the full and in all details. This monks is to be understood as the meaning of the saying, this worthy is an unworthy one. Then again, the unworthy one, even when asked, 
does not speak out what is to another's credit, much less when asked. If, however, he is obliged to speak on being questioned, then with reserve and equivocation he utters praise of another grudgingly and in brief. This monks is to be understood as the meaning of the saying, this worthy is an unworthy one. Again, monks, the unworthy one, even when asked, does not speak out what is discreditable to himself, much less does he do so when unasked. If, however, he is obliged to speak on being questioned, then with reserve and equivocation he utters grudgingly and in brief what is to his own discredit. This monks is to be understood as the meaning of the saying, this worthy is an unworthy one. Once more, monks, the unworthy one, even unasked, speaks, up, speaks out what is creditable to himself. What then does he do when asked? If, however, he is obliged to speak on being questioned, then without reserve or equivocation, he sings his own praises to the full and in all details. This monks is to be understood as the meaning of the saying, this worthy is an unworthy one. Thus, possessed of these four things, one is to be understood as an unworthy one. And vice versa huh, for a worthy person. So, in this sutta, the Buddha is saying an unworthy person huh, is one huh, who is too quick huh, to speak ill of another's faults. Huh. Uh, and is not ready eh, to speak well of another's good qualities. Eh. But of his own, eh, if he has faults, eh, he's always trying to hide his faults. And if he's got some good points, eh, he'll blow his own trumpet. Eh. Uh, that is an unworthy person. But one thing we must know, eh, that uh, there is a difference eh, um, in saying uh, what is wrong uh, and talking bad about someone on a personal level. Uh, there's a difference uh, between pointing out what is right and what is wrong uh, on an impersonal level and speaking bad about somebody uh, on a personal level. There's a difference. Uh, for example, uh, in the one of the earlier suttas we, we read, uh, in the Anguttara Nikaya 1.11.1, the Buddha said, uh, what is not Dhamma should be pointed out uh, as not Dhamma. If somebody teaches something uh, which is not according to the Dhamma, and he claims that it is according to the Dhamma, and we know that it is not according to the Dhamma, then we should point it out uh, that it is not according to the Dhamma. Otherwise, uh, it will harm many people if they learn the wrong Dhamma. Uh, if we point out what is right Dhamma and what is wrong Dhamma, then uh, uh, it will benefit many people. Uh, a little later, uh, we will see another sutta, uh, Anguttara Nikaya 4.100, uh, where the Buddha talked about four kinds of person. A per one person speaks in dispraise of what deserves not praise but does not speak in praise of what deserves praise. And then a second person, he speaks in praise of what deserves praise, but not in dispraise of what deserves not praise. And then a third person, he speaks neither in dispraise of what deserves not praise, nor in praise of the praiseworthy. And then the fourth type of person, he speaks both in dispraise of what deserves not praise and in praise of what is praiseworthy. And the Buddha asked somebody, of these four types of person, which is the best? And then this person gave an answer, but the Buddha did not agree. And then the Buddha said, the best person is one who speaks in dispraise of what deserves not praise and in praise of what is praiseworthy. In other words, what is what should be dispraised, uh, he dispraises. What should be praised, he praises. The Buddha said that is the most admirable person because he talks very straight. Uh, uh, he, he's, he discriminates on the proper occasion. Uh, so, 
uh, we have to know uh, there's a difference between being personal and telling facts. Uh. Now the next sutta is 4.8.74. Uh, but this sutta is a little bit more for monks. Eh? The Buddha said, Just as monks, when a young wife is first led home to her husband, either by day or night, she at first feels exceeding great fear and bashfulness in the presence of her mother-in-law, her father-in-law, her husband, and even towards servants and work people. But as time goes on, owing to living together and intimacy, she addresses mother-in-law, father-in-law and husband thus, Away with you, what do you know? Just in like manner, monks, a certain monk here, maybe when he first goes forth, whether by day or night, from the home to the homeless life, feels exceeding great fear and bashfulness in the presence of monks and nuns, disciples, male and female, even of novices who serve in the mon monastery. But as time goes on, owing to living together and intimacy, he addresses teacher and preceptor thus, Away with you! What do you know? Wherefore, monks, thus must you train yourselves. I will dwell in mine like a young wife newly arrived. That is how you must train yourselves. In this sutta, we can see eh, that uh, the tradition in India is that uh, Wife, eh? when when a man and woman marries, the wife goes to live with the husband's family. Uh, that's the Indian tradition. So the Buddha is saying when a new wife eh, is brought to the home eh, of the husband, eh, she's very shy, very scared. Eh? But later, after many years, eh, she becomes very arrogant. Uh, it's possible eh? Uh, so in the same way, the Buddha said, a new monk, uh, when he first goes forth, uh, he might be very scared of the superiors, scared of the teacher, acharya, and the preceptor, upajaya. But later he becomes arrogant and uh, he talks very coarse with them. Uh. So the Buddha said this shouldn't be, uh, that a uh, monk should always uh, behave as though he's a young wife, uh, like just uh, the simile of the young wife newly arrived. Uh and must be um, respectful to the superior monks. But in, in a way, this sutta can also be applied to lay people, the simile of the wife, newly married, and somebody is newly married, and, and after many years, should not um, be arrogant. Now we come to the next sutta, uh, 4.8.77. The Buddha said, Monks, there are these four unthinkables, not to be thought of, thinking of which one would be distraught and come to grief. What are the four? Of Buddhas, monks, the range is unthinkable, not to be thought of. Of one who is in jhana, monks, the range is, of his jhana is unthinkable, not to be thought of. The result of karma, monks, is unthinkable, not to be thought of. World speculation, monks, is unthinkable, not to be thought of, thinking of which one would be distraught and would come to grief. These monks are the four unthinkables, thinking of which uh, one would be distraught and would come to grief. That's the end of the sutta. Yes, just now the uh, sutta. The Buddha said there are four things uh, we should not think about. Uh, should not think too much about. Uh, the first one is the range of a Buddha. Range of a Buddha possibly could mean the power of a Buddha, the ability of a Buddha. It's hard to fathom the uh, power of a Buddha. Uh, no need to speculate about it, the Buddha said. Uh. Second one is jhana, the range of jhana. Uh, this one's a bit hard to understand, the depth of jhana or something like that. The third one is the result, uh, the vipaka of karma. Karma is intentional action. And uh, to speculate uh, on the um, karma is uh, 
very difficult, uh, the Buddha said, uh, to, to think about karma. Very hard to explain karma because karma involves many, many lifetimes. Uh, past lifetimes uh, we have not seen. So sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, some people, uh, they find it a bit difficult sometimes uh, to believe that there's such a thing as karma. Why? Because they say a person, uh, this, a particular person has done a lot of evil. Yet, in spite of being an evil person, he's enjoying life. Uh, and this is one of those things because we haven't seen the, his past karma. In the past, he might have done a lot of good. People can change, you know. Uh, people often change. For example, a person when he's poor, he's very hardworking, very humble, and all the good qualities you can find because he's, 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 he's low. Uh, he's, he's low in life. But later, when he comes into a lot of money, becomes a very, very rich multi-millionaire, I see that person will change, will change a lot, can become very arrogant, uh, can be uh, changed in many, many ways, uh, so that uh, you see the former person and the new person, uh, it look like two different persons altogether. Uh, so that's why, uh, uh, that's why it's very hard uh, to to see uh, that uh, a person, uh, you see him doing evil, but in the past he might have been a very virtuous person. That's why uh, he's uh, enjoying life, having a lot of uh, good uh, vipaka, good, uh, good fruits uh, of karma. So uh, the Buddha said, the result of karma, and uh, don't speculate too much about karma. The fourth one is world speculation, uh, the, about the future of the world. Uh, it's something uh, that... Um, Buddha said, no point to think about. Uh, it's, uh, things happen uh, that are quite unexpected, uh, like uh, people never expected uh, USSR, Soviet Union, uh, to break up in such a big world power suddenly broke up. <laughs> people like Princess Diana suddenly dying. 